Hello everyone, this is Bentley from Cat Washington, and today we're going to do another how-to basics featuring one of my favorite rainbow fish, but also one of the most common rainbow fish, and that is the Melanotania lacustris, or the turquoise rainbow. Uh, so if you guys have seen my, my how-to basics on Bose Monai, um, I've kind of put together a PowerPoint presentation with some basics, but I've also got some photos to uh, show you guys some stuff of my personal rainbows and then a little bit of video to spice into. So with that being said, let's get started right away. So again, we're looking at Melanotania lacustris, the turquoise rainbow. These guys are common pretty much everywhere um you know even if you don't have a, a good local fish store you know even pet smarts and petcos i have seen uh turquoise rainbows present at those stores now they're not quite as good as you're usually going to get at some other places but they still end up being very beautiful fish so let's start with our background and parameters uh the Scientific description was written back in 1964 by Ian Monroe. However, this fish, as far as the aquarium hobby is concerned, was first collected in 1955 at Lake Katubu, which is in the southern highlands province of Papua New Guinea, by an Australian patrol officer. Now, later on, um, there were lots of troubles, and it required subsequent collections in the 80s in order to get them into the hobby uh, first by Gerald Allen, and then eventually by Heiko Glahare. They're a tropical fish, so you can't go really cold. But unlike a lot of the other rainbows, turquoise rainbows actually do really well in lower temperatures. Their natural habitat is a bit cooler, um, where they range between 70 degrees and upwards of 80 in their natural climate. They tend to prefer that kind of 74 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit range, which is... Um, it's like 23 to 26 Celsius. Uh, they do, they can do well in 80 degree Fahrenheit, like most of the other rainbows. So if you're doing a big community tank and you're going to do 80 degrees, they'll be okay in that. But if you want to keep a tank at a little bit cooler temperature, say that 74, this is actually the best rainbow for you to select. Um, and some can, they, some of them can even live in aquariums as high as 89. Although I personally would never recommend pushing any rainbows to that kind of temperature. That's just a a little too hot, but it can do. They can do it. It's pretty and crazy. Uh, lake Atubu itself is this very clear lake that's fed by underground springs, and those are all traveling through limestone. So what does that tell us? We're going to have pretty hard water and hard pH in the wild. So that means when we take them to an aquarium, even though they are, like most rainbow fish, pretty adaptable, they'll take between a 6.5 and an 8 pH. Their natural habitat is 8.5 to 9 with a very high TDS because it's going through limestone. So you can push them a lot higher, but again, like most rainbow fish, they're going to want that just a little over seven, like that 7.2 to 7.4 range, if you can, is perfect. If For those of you who monitor your TDS, try to get at least 120 TDS, upwards of, say, four and even 500 TDS is okay. They are all naturally from harder water, so having that extra mineral content in the water is perfectly okay with the rainbow fish turquoise rainbows especially because their lake is very mineral rich uh they get a little bigger not not super huge but the males are going to get up to five inches and they're going to typically have more vibrant coloration females can grow very similar in size about four and a half inches or so and they show a slightly duller but the best part about turquoise is that both of them are very colorful fish both males and females show this wonderful array of blues that can go from you know, like kind of greenish aquamarine, the turquoisey type colors that hence their name, and all the way into like deep cobalt blue. Uh, males are the only the only like definite for sure where you're going to see a male, other than some body size and finish, which I'll show you in just a sec. When they're doing their sparring or mating behavior, you're going to see a big gold stripe that can go all the way to like an orange red color um, from their dorsal fin all the way to the tip of their nose. So talking of color, let's shoot over to a couple pictures I shot of some of mine. So here, you have to track my mouse a little bit here. You can see one of my turquoise rainbows. This is actually a female, but look at how bright blue this color is. I mean, here's an electric blue Acara, right? Here's a turquoise rainbow, both very bright blue. You can see another turquoise down here. And you'll notice that I said this is a female, and that's that much color in a female, where like if you look at, say, the Goiter River up here, the reds, all that, much duller color in a female. 
Notice that the difference. We're like, this is a female fish right here. Pretty insane. Go to the next one. So oh, here's another male. And my other male. So these are two of my younger males. You'll notice if you look here in this male, this big hump forming after the head. And like if you're familiar with rainbow fish, you've seen this a lot. But if we back up to that female, notice this much more smooth shape. Instead of that extreme hump, you've got this slower curve in the body shape. That's one of the other ways as they get older as adults that you can identify males from females. Males are going to have those big, strong hump kind of bodies, almost look kind of like a humpback, um, where the females will stay a little more smooth with a lighter curve to them. Uh, so the big thing about rainbows, almost all rainbows prefer planted tanks. Turquoise especially do really well in planted tanks. Their natural lake habitat has a lot of plant life in it. It has very clean, clear water. So that's what we want to emulate. Good water. It doesn't have to have high flow, but we want a little bit. We want lots of plants, and that's going to make them look lights out all the time. One of the other best parts about turquoise is they almost never lose their color throughout the day. Some rainbows are real morning showers. They're going to spawn in the morning. They show their best colors in the morning. And then as the day goes on, that color fades away. Turquoise rainbows always show color. And that's part of why they are so common in the hobby, even at your, your big box stores. They're always beautiful. If you love bluefish, I think they're the must-have blue rainbow. Just despite the fact that they're the most common, they have the best blue, plain and simple. That beautiful, vibrant blue color, that's a turquoise rainbow. Uh, and like all rainbows, again, they want a longer tank. They want that swim space. Um, anything that's at least four foot in length is really going to be great. 55 gallons are great for turquoise. 75 gallons are even better. Anything that's going to give you that length. Now, if you're only doing a pair, now keep in mind they're a schooler. They really want to be in groups of six or more. But if you decide to do just a pair, maybe as like centerpiece fish, um, a 29 gallon tank is fine for a pair of adults. I have a couple of friends that keep just a pair of uh, older adult turquoise rainbows together and they're almost all exclusively in 29 gallon tanks and they do great. So why turquoise rainbows other than what I just said about if they're the, if you want blue they're the best. Um, so again we just kind of mentioned this they're a peaceful schooling community fish. All rainbows are like this but really turquoises are kind of just big gentle giants. Uh, they can change their color at will. So it's going to shell those colors that I told you about were like that turquoise color, that aquamarine, those more green hints that all the way to like deep, almost purpley cobalt blues. They shift through all those colors all the time, all throughout the day, kind of at will. So it's, it's always going to give you this beautiful array of blue color in your tank. Both the males and the females show beautiful color. Now the males are going to be a little more vibrant. So maybe a female will see... A kind of a nice bright blue and that male is going to be dark cobalt blue that's like really your difference and like i said for most rainbows it's not like that the females show very little color a lot of times turquoise is a big exception where those females are always a beautiful fish so it doesn't matter whether you get males or females they're always going to look good they're very boisterous. They're very social. This this is not a fish that's going to hide from you, especially in a group. Now, if you only have a pair and they're really young, they might be a little more shy. But once they get used to you, this is the fish that's going to be see you out, out of the corner of the tank. And it's going to be at that corner of the tank like a puppy dog begging for food. And the second you walk to the tank, they're going to chase you down that tank, staying right with you the whole time. They're very active. They're very social. All rainbow fish are like this, but man, turquoise are really the epitome of that. Some of my favorite fish as far as personality have always been my turquoise rainbows. The adults can spawn daily. So you're going to see their sparring behavior, their spawning behavior, their coloration every day. Very typically in the morning, right after feeding, shortly after your lights have come on, that's when they're going to be the most active. So if your schedule is weird and you're not in your typical morning, you can adjust your tank's light to create that effect and have that at whatever time of the day you want. Like every other rainbow fish, they'll eat almost anything. <laughs> I've, I've, I haven't had a problem getting my rainbows, especially the turquoises, to eat whatever I throw at them. Flake, pellet, frozen, live. It doesn't matter. They'll eat anything, but do give them a good diet. Try to try to mix your stuff. High quality flake foods uh, like, and, and granule foods. So 
you've got fluval bug bites. Uh, you could do new life spectrum. Uh, I really love and have been loving tropicals line of food. It's I, my rainbows just devour it. The turquoise are no exception. They're some of the most uh, boisterous eaters I have, or they just gobble down food. But uh, they, you know, in the wild, they're living primarily off of insects, some algae, which they will eat hair algae if they're hungry enough. So keep that in mind, and small crustaceans. One thing about feeding rainbows, always a suggestion, the turquoise, especially if you're keeping them at that lower temperature, give them one day a week where you fast them and don't feed them. So let's say maybe Sunday you don't feed those fish. That is going to be best overall for their health. Just make sure you don't run into anything like a constipation issue or something like that. Breeding. So we've seen, let me go back to, we'll go back to our pictures here and let's start talking how we sex males and females before we talk about exactly what we need to do to breed these fish. So here's this picture again. Uh, I, I keep coming to this just because it's really clear. So if you notice, we've got that slender body shape, right? But let's say you have younger fish. Maybe your fish are only um, young adults at like two inches or so, and you're not going to see this. You want to start looking up here. So here's your dorsal fin. And you'll notice how the dorsal fin comes up, and then there's a break. So there's this break between this rear fin and the dorsal. Now we're going to advance. Here's a male, and notice how he's got this fin touching that back fin. The dorsal goes all the way back and touches. And we can show this a little more extreme in this shot here. See how much longer this dorsal fin is, where it could cover this fin up if it weren't coming at an angle here? So it goes all the way over. And then here's both of them in the shot. Notice, here's that female again from the side. And look, there's a big gap right here between the dorsal fin and the rear fin. The male, not so much. So you've got those big humps on the adults versus the curve. But the big tell right here is this fin, the dorsal touching the rear fin. So if we were to look at some younger fish, here they are again by each other. You see big gap from the front. Less, it's, it's harder to see because his fin curves off, but this actually goes all the way back and touches this fin. Um, so if we look at some younger fish, I have some younger turquoise in another tank. Here's one right here. Notice we have that gap. Good indication that this is a female. Where we've got here, this little boy right here, look at that. Fin comes all the way back and you can see even though it's being held up, it would definitely overlap these fins right here on the rear of the fish. That's how you identify males and females. It takes a little time to really get used to doing this, but that is the best way to identify in the turquoise until they get much older and they show that obvious body shape, a male and female. Now, if they, if you see two of them get together, one's got a bright yellow or red nose, and the other one doesn't and they're shaking against each other, you probably have a male and female pair. But for the purposes of maybe you're trying to pick them out at a fish store, this is what you wanna look for. So now let's talk about actually breeding these fish. Um, generally, the ratio is one male per two females. It's, it's okay to do a pair. Um, plenty of people had lots of success with pairs. I tend to suggest like one male to two females or two males and three females as a breeding group. They're an egg scatterer, just like every other rainbow. So this is something where spawning mops are gonna be your friends. You can go down to like a 20 gallon tank, like a 20 gallon tall with younger adults. Now, if you've got full five inch adults, you're going to want something like a 40 breeder or a 29. But for younger adults, say they're only um, three inches, two and a half inches, something like that. A 20 gallon is perfectly fine. You can get them in there with a spawning mop. Don't have too many plants in that tank. Uh, you just you want to force them to go to that spawning mop. With all rainbows turquoise especially, do not mix your species. If you have a community tank, you don't want to breed inside that community tank because just a little bit of, of sperm kidding eggs that are not that same species will create a hybrid. And those hybrids typically have much duller color, are not as pretty. Um, and, and generally, these are a, a rare fish at this point. The habitat in Lake Katubu is very threatened. These are a IUCN um, red species, which means they're cares fish. So their natural habitat is actually having trouble and they're struggling in the wild. So this is one where we definitely do not want to mix the species. We're going to want to breed them on their own without anything else, maybe some snails, but nothing else in the tank and just pull those mops. 
the easiest way to condition them is to start doing either live brine, float, frozen bloodworms, frozen brine. I really love feeding Daphnia, uh, whether it is live or frozen. It's a great high quality food. It's one of those micro crustaceans. It gives them everything they would be getting in the wild. Very, very good for conditioning those fish to do very good spawning. Um, your mops, 40 to 50 wraps around a book. Um, if you've never seen, there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube on how to make a spawning mop. It's going to be good density, but also loose enough to where they can move throughout the mop. Um, I, I personally think that as long as your fish are leaving the mop alone and they're not picking the eggs too much, you can leave a, a mop in for about a full week, get a lot of eggs every day, and then move that mop to your raising tank. But for some people, they're going to want to remove them every day. If you see those fish going in there shortly after spawning and eating the eggs, you'll, you'll want to like watch them spawn, pull them up, pick your eggs out, move them to your raising tank and your hatching tank, and then put your mop back in. Uh, so they're a daily spawner. They're going to continually breed. This is a really great thing about rainbows. They take a long time to raise up, but you can raise a lot of fish because they're just going to keep breeding and keep breeding and keep breeding. Sometimes they will take little breaks of a week or two off. They'll just relax. Maybe they've done too much, but they're in general going to breed every day. So we've got our eggs. How do we hatch and raise these fry? Number one, remove remove the eggs from the parent tank. Uh, baby rainbow fish are very, very tiny. They're like a little pencil streak, and your three-inch adult is going to think that that's a piece of Daphnia flying around, and that looks delicious, and turn it into a snack. There's kind of two ways to do this. You can either A, put them into a cycle tank where you will need a lot of water flow over the eggs, but not so much because they're very fragile right when they hatch, it's, it's a really weird game, but to prevent fungusing, you kind of want to have flow. I tend to prefer a tray method, and that's using like a plastic tray, floating it in your tank with a little bit of water that is not tank water, just water that you've um, maybe aerated for two or three days to get it clean, to get the chlorine out. Uh, if you have chloramine, you have to use the chlorinator and then do that otherwise, but try not to use the chlorinator directly use that very clean water and have the eggs in there. And as soon as fry hatch, um, you can either A, feed them in there. Although what I prefer to do is take a small pipette, uh, suck the little fry up. It's like, I tend to use a turkey baster just because it's bigger. It's a little more gentle on them and then move them into their tank. Um, you want to have very minimal water movement for the first about month. Rainbow fish are very fragile and typically live in the top quarter inch of water for the first two weeks of their life. And maybe, only the top inch or two for the first month. Some will go lower. There are exceptions, but this is the most common thing you're going to run into. With turquoise, it's okay to run at like 78 to 80 degrees for fry, but realistically, to get them to grow fast and have a good metabolism, 82 to 83 is kind of a preferred temperature. Each egg, no matter which day it's been laid, will take a range of 7 to 14 days to hatch. So if you've had 20 eggs on day one, on day seven, you could have three hatch. On day eight, you could have another one hatch. On the, It doesn't matter what day they were laid. Each egg has a kind of uh, random number of days it decides until it decides to hatch. So with this being said, your first foods need to be very, very small. We're talking like 50 microns in size. Um, golden pearls and Sarah Micron are great, easily prepared powdered foods that are just available out there. I use Sarah Micron personally because it's available locally. Gary Lang, the, the Indiana Jones of Rainbow Fish, he prefers golden pearls. It's two different schools. I've had success using both. Micron is just more available to me locally, so that's what I use. You can also use some of the super microculture foods like vinegar eels and microworms. If you culture paramecium, that's amazing. Infusoria, if you know how to culture that. These are all great foods for baby rainbows. One thing you definitely don't want to do in that raising tank, if you're putting the eggs in the tank, no snails. Those snails will eat all those eggs right away. So no snails whatsoever. You almost want to have just a completely bare tank with just like a sponge filter in it and nothing else. And that sponge running at almost no air whatsoever. You want that water to barely move. You might have to have no movement and use a paper towel to remove the scum layer, which is something I've done personally. I've just 
run the paper towel over the top of the water to remove that protein layer every day until they got old enough. And then I started turning the air up so I had enough water movement to not create that in the first place. Um, once you get past, I would say two weeks, um, when you get used to this, there's a certain size they get, but typically it's about two weeks after the last hatch has happened. So if, uh, you know, the if the last egg hatched on day 14, then two weeks after that is when you now want to start shifting to using live baby brine shrimp. And I, I put need here in capital letters on purpose. You really do need to use live baby brine. It is the absolute best food source. Now, if you're using like vinegar eels and microworms, those are also very good sources. But the baby brine has the little little bits of calcium from the, the natural exoskeletons and stuff like that. There's just so much advantage to using live baby brine shrimp as a food source up until those fish hit about an inch in length. And even then, I use mine until they're almost two inches. Uh, initial color can come as early as three to four months with a turquoise rainbow. They actually color up quite a bit earlier than a lot of the other fish. However, true adult color typically doesn't start until five to six months and then at that age they're already usually the size about an inch to an inch and a half where they can start spawning on their own like all other rainbow fish they will spawn way earlier than you think but the likelihood of you having successful spawns is significantly lower than something that is like a three inch adult fish so that's the basics <laughs> we've gone through that we've seen young adults like here's a good young adult. He's like two and a half inches or so, almost three. Really great for um, early spawning. If you can get a fish this size at a store, especially now because you can easily identify, right? We've got this fin to identify there's our male. Big break in the fin that identifies our female. And you can see even with this like not so great light, dirty glass, still got blue color right in here. And look at all that blue. And it's not full blue because they're still young adults. But then this boy here, beautiful blue color coming through and then as they get to adulthood you're going to start seeing this where you've got this beautiful blue here a little more of those green tones in the male being shown a little brighter blue here in the female but that's just the case they change those colors all the time so we've seen some pictures we've seen a powerpoint why don't we kick over to a little bit of video and watch these guys just kind of swimming around the tank and uh, i'll give you some extra commentary about how i i look at them uh, just when they're swimming around and how you can gauge things and, and figure it out whether or not you're seeing, um, you know, healthy behavior, a female, a male, all that kind of stuff. So here we are looking into my community tank and right away we've got the turquoise. Uh, the bottom of the two is the female and you'll notice the, the much more big humps of the big boy above. But here's a young uh, male fish and you notice how that dorsal fin goes all the way right by the acara and touches that rear fin even on a young fish. So when you don't have the humps, this is what you're gonna look for. And these are about a three inch or so fish, really easy to spot. Here's an older male who, um, I, I adopted this guy and I think he had kind of stunted growth, which is why he's not as quite as long, but you'll see that dorsal goes all the way back and touches compared to the big female above him, big gap in that fin, right? Makes it really obvious when you see them side by side, you can look at these things and, and understand exactly how to tell the difference between that female and male when they're swimming around in the tank. But again, you can look, that female has that beautiful kind of white belly, brilliant blue top here as we follow her around. And then we'll kind of shift over in a sec and we'll look at the male and the color is almost the same. There's some little differences here and there, and it depends on how that fish decides it wants to show its color for the day. So here's here's our boy right here. You can see kind of that white in the belly, brilliant blue color up top. Almost no difference in color. That's the beautiful part about turquoise rainbows is that male or female, it doesn't matter. The color is always going to be beautiful blue. And that's one of the reasons why you guys know I'm a sucker for blue fish. I love turquoise rainbows. I don't think a, a rainbow collection is complete without having turquoise rainbows. And here's that young male just, and you can see even a young fish surrounded by much bigger fish. My camera right in his face doesn't care. He's just kind of swimming around happy as can be looking right at me, trying to figure out what are you doing and why haven't you fed me yet? This is part of why I love rainbows, man. They don't, they don't not scared of anything. They just, when, when are we getting the next bit of food, man? I love rainbows, especially turquoise. So let's look at another video of some of the young fish. 
So here we are in my 90 gallon tank with my younger rainbows. Uh, and you can see, here's the young turquoise. Not as much color, not as vibrant because they're young, but even then this is partially also not as good light. You can still see good blue in the fins, that brilliant blue stripe up type, that kind of silvery white belly. Just great looking fish. Again, here we are looking at this male. You can see how that dorsal, even in this much smaller fish, he's only about two inches or so, goes all the way and covers that rear fin. Whereas the female right under him right now, you can see that kind of obvious gap. It doesn't touch as much. Not quite as obvious in this fish as they get to full adulthood. It's super obvious, but this is what you look for. Again, we've got a male right here is just swimming in the frame. I'm going to kind of follow him. You can see how that dorsal fin goes all the way up and covers part of that rear fin. You don't have that gap. Above him, the female, gap. Really, really simple stuff in how to tell the difference between these fish. And that is your basics on the turquoise rainbow fish. I think one of the, the best starter rainbow fish out there, uh, easily one of the ones where anybody who has been to just kind of generically a pet store probably recognizes maybe they don't know it's a rainbow fish but they recognize that fish i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you had all the education you need so that you can be super successful with turquoise rainbow fish uh, let me know down in the comments do you own turquoise rainbow fish is this a fish that you have thought about getting or maybe is there something that i didn't answer in this basics that you want to know about keeping and being successful with the turquoise rainbow as always, guys, I really appreciate you watching these videos. If there is a, uh, another how-to basics of a different rainbow fish you'd like to see, I'm going to slowly kind of go through as many as I can. Um, it's just uh, they're a little bit of a process. They take a little bit of work. So let me know which one you'd like to see next. Uh, that'll kind of go up in my, my, my idea board, my queue of work that I'm doing for myself. Just shoot me a comment down below. Don't forget, we still have the 1,500 subscriber giveaway going until the end of Christmas Day 2018. I'm going to link that in the end card. A huge shout out to uh, Jimmy, aka Swiskey, for that awesome intro that he gave to me. What a what a what a sweet guy. Um, it's kind of kind of neat to have something way more professional than my work. <laughs> uh, but besides that, let me know down in the comments what what. What thing was most interesting to you about the turquoise rainbow fish? What what didn't I cover? What what would you like to see next? Just let me know. I love seeing all your guys' comments. I love reading them. I love replying to them. I love answering your guys' questions. Uh, it's part of what makes YouTube and the YouTube Fish Fam community really fun for me is both interacting and helping folks whenever I can. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.